Okay, this slide is a very important slide to synthesize and understand and to examine in detail. You're going to want to at some point be able to put everything all together so that you're looking at uh, the cardiac rate and the ventricle stretch and all of these factors that really are going to affect the performance of the heart. Now cardiac output, you're going to recall that cardiac output is equal to the cardiac rate. So this, another way of saying that is just call this my heart rate, right? And so, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. My heart rate, okay? And that heart rate can be controlled by two different systems. Uh, the sympathetic nervous system will increase that heart rate and remember that what it does if we look at the pacemaker potential if my normal potential looks like this per se then when the sympathetic nervous system activates it um, I actually get a much steeper climb more rapid depolarization and then I'm ready to go again so I can actually fit more of those action potentials into the same given space. And so that's the effect of the sympathetic nervous system. Whereas the parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, inhibits this process. And I'm actually going to change. I don't like the dotted arrow effect because I tend to use, I prefer that. So that's my inhibitory symbol. And so my parasympathetic nervous system, if we were to do the same thing down here, is what it actually does is prolong the contraction so that we can fit fewer of those action potentials in the same amount of space. And the net result of that is to change heart rate, which is dictated by those pacemaker cells. Now, in addition to heart rate, we have my stroke volume and stroke volume is a function of my end diastolic volume and that's part of the Frank Starling law of the heart and that is affected by the amount of ventricle stretch and you'll remember we just talked about that and looked at that so the more the stretch of the ventricle the more force it can generate up until a point once those myosin and actin fibers no longer interact um, it's very difficult to generate force but these factors together will give me my contra contraction strength. In addition to end diastolic volume and ventricle stretch, we also have the ability of the sympathetic nervous system to increase contraction in and of itself by increasing that contractility through the release of more of my calcium 2 plus, right, into my solution, uh, my interest cellular fluid and so these are all factors that you really need to synthesize and understand and put together the last one I'm going to talk up here is this one now we haven't had a chance to really dive into total peripheral resistance I did give you a preliminary kind of definition I'm changing this by the way into my favorite symbol my preferred symbol I did give you a kind of a very brief overview and what that refers to is essentially your afterload. Okay, that's essentially what that's going to be, is how that affects cardiac output. And so a high afterload will diminish the amount of cardiac output that um, we see. Okay. And so, and you might recall that we talked about the end diastolic volume being part of that preload phenomenon that we discussed very briefly.